Thanks for joining in today. So yet another session uh, of our fashion symposium at Vogue Institute of Art and Design. I'm really lucky to have Miss Maria again with us for the second session. Welcome, Maria. Uh, just for the people who are uh, who did miss our last session, Maria is an acclaimed fashion illustrator and designer from France, and she's also working faculty at Vogue Institute of Fashion Technology, Bangalore. We are blessed to have her with us for the second session today. And she'll be talking about creative approach to new fashion. And joining in today with us in the panelists, we have Ms. Roshni Dinkar. Uh, she's an Indian costume designer and filmmaker who has worked in Kannada, Tamil, and Telugu film industries as designer and also as, as director. So her directorial debut with Malayalam film, My Story in 2018, I think a lot of people must have watched. So I welcome Ms. Roshni. I think our network is stuck. Okay, okay. No problem. I think she'll be joining us as and when her network uh, comes back. So, uh, attendees, uh, thanks for coming. Please join in uh, and write your questions whenever you have in the question and answer box only. Any technical problems on your chat box? Uh, just to uh, let us know the data. Deja, can you please share the data with us before we start the presentation? So, good morning, all. Uh, the uh, registrations for today, the total registrations for today as of now is 700 and uh, out of which we have again maximum number of students covering almost uh, 383 uh, uh, we have students here uh, along with uh, 217 teaching professionals and uh, around 100 we have industrialists joining, in, joining us from various parts of uh, India. Uh, from Pondicherry, from Bangalore, from uh, Chennai, Coimbatore, Delhi, Mumbai, and then again from USA and from UK as well. And uh, teaching professionals also <clears throat> joining from various colleges with us, from NIFT, from NIFTI, from Army Institute, from uh, Acharya, and then finally uh, uh, the industrialists joining us from various, from various companies. Uh, Mintra, Newell, uh, Flipkart, Amazon, uh, that's it. I think it's a whole combination of um, all the people would be listening to you. Uh, Maria, please welcome. And uh, uh, over to Mishweta. I'm so honored to talk to so many people and it shows <laughs> that I hope no one was bored during the last session. <laughs> 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 so thanks, th uh, thanks Divya for the data. I think uh, Ms. Roshni is back with us. So I welcome uh, uh, Ms. Roshni. So we'll Thank you so much, Veta. Thanks a lot. Yeah, we'll Thanks be happy to get your inputs. Okay, so Thank Maria, so I'll uh, pass on the screen to you now. You can uh, start yeah, off. Sure, sure. So I will make a sign for the for the video. So uh, today I will try to cover the uh, what is the new way for the fashion. What is the creativity? I see that we have so many students. So I will do like uh, this small note about the fashion education outside of India. So uh, how, um, what, what is a little difference? It's more and more uh, we have a similarity, but what kind of difference we have? And because the creativity is stored separately uh, from the main course uh, and um, what kind of the difference it gives then for the uh, in the creative approach to the fashion as the part of the, uh, let's say, art. Uh, so uh, let's start with the, um, seeing what uh, the, the fashion as, uh, as it is. So what kind of the things uh, influence the fashion and what we should, uh, I guess I can't pass, okay. Uh, so sorry, I uh, had that some technical problem. Uh, so I, I need the second slide. So the influence to the fashion. So uh, everybody agrees uh, that uh, fashion is the uh, part we are. We are humans are the part of the landscape. So right, uh, and then what we are wearing become also the part of the urban landscapes. So we are influenced by the. Uh, by the everything what we see outside. So what, uh, it's the common knowledge that in the city we are dressed differently than we are going to the countryside, right? So uh, what kind of the cities will influence, what kind of 
things will influence us as the part of the landscape. So uh, as far as we continue in uh, the urbanism, we see that we need the multidisciplinary approach to fashion. Uh, the queen of the all arts, all design, uh, I'm sorry for the others who are not the architects, uh, it's the architecture. So, uh, because this is the biggest space where we live in, where we're going. So, uh, and uh, the con concentration of the architectural buildings become the multi uh, multipolitan city. So, uh, inside of the architectural construction, we will have an interior design. So, entering the room, we are the part of, the, of that environment, right? Because even, uh, for example, when we have, I think many colleges are having that assignment of the um, interactive fashion. So it means that making the garments for the hotels, for the airlines. So then we think about how, for example, the hostess will be seen from the far and etc. So we are considering uh, the staff as the part of the interior design. Uh, then product design for sure, um, if you don't know that, for example, the shoes are in the border between fashion design and product design and basically belong to product design. Transport design, so uh, what I think everybody knows how, for example, the car design influences the sneakers, the, the runners, right? Uh, then music and entertainment for sure. Because more and more, uh, the trendsetters are the musicians, not only the, the models and etc. So music and entertainment gives normally the style. So this will be also the, the big influence to the fashion. So you need to supervise, you need to see what is happening, happening around. Uh, then the problem, what we are facing now, it's not uh, how to do the things. So the technical part. We are facing the problem what to do. So, because basically, uh, if we see that everything is done, so all the creativity in fashion is, was already implemented. So we had corset, we have uh, that uh, extra large, extra skinny thing. So this, this is uh, the, uh, the challenge of nowadays. I don't know if, uh, for example, the students, when you are, uh, bringing some decisions, some uh, proposals to your uh, teachers or the designers are proposing some, uh, some designs for the brands. I think you might be uh, all the face the problem that the people are uh, telling you, okay, this is deja vu, means all the scene. So what you can propose, because how you can make it. Now it's, uh, there are so many options of, of making it. So this, you need basically to have more ideas. So to work on this concept part and not on the uh, solutions of the, of the making. So um, here I want to introduce you for the um, like European and American pattern, uh, Commonwealth, let's say, uh, pattern of the design schools, because we have uh, two years, in France we have two years, the foundation years. So the first year we just uh, teach uh, how to draw, how to uh, sculpt, how to like introduction to the, uh, to the art. So because uh, fashion in design, fashion is a part of design, right? It belongs to the still arts and communication. And uh, those two years, uh, the first year basically we learning how to do, how to uh, show their ideas. Then the second year, um, we compulsory try all the parts of design. So uh, we have, it's like you have no choice. Uh, I think in the UK now you have a choice, I'm not aware, but um, so you do interior design, graphic design uh, and fashion design. Uh, you try for three months and you do the project in those three areas. So why we do it? Uh, I faced uh, many times that in India, uh, maybe someone from the students listening to us can recognize themselves that you want to shift from one option to another option. You are doing fashion design and suddenly you want to do the interior design. Or you, you feel like it fits better your creativity. 
So uh, then um, another thing, we don't have the parents or society pressure. It means like if I chosen interior design, I will go for it. It doesn't mean that now the demand is, for example, for architecture or I don't know, another part of design. So I won't shift because I won't really to do what I want to do because what is happening after your graduation uh, maybe that demand will be shifted from one area to another area. So uh, this is uh, this is a thing. And then after, so first year, drawing, painting, all discovery, and also we have the entrance exam. So uh, then uh, the second year, we try all kinds of designs, and then we are going for the, it's still BA, it's not master's, for the three years of study of the particular branch what you've chosen. So uh, then you have that sort of the wide range of the opportunities. And then, uh, so now seeing that it, it's interlinked, uh, for example, the fashion designers can do the fabrics. So a textile, a, a fashion and textile normally it's the same, same range. So fashion textile, we do uh, the project with uh, interior designers for the fabrics, for the, uh, or for example, wall painting uh, through wallpaper and etc. So uh, now the demand is that designer should have the knowledge of all branches of the design. Because the, and we also have all um, the subject on the first year and second year uh, called creative thinking. So uh, we, uh, we formulate or we are given the brief. So this is the seven steps of design process, so uh, for the for the uh, creativity, and uh, so it's like uh, the Sapta Bhutianga who who is Buddhist. So you remember the seven steps. Uh, define. So if we are doing, if we are students, we define ourselves. The, our brief. We'll do the research, the background research. So what kind of elements we will need for our idea. Uh, so we try to find the uh, solutions. So it's all on the paper. It's still on the paper until it will go to the prototyping, making the part to resolve the problem. So the problem which was shown in the brief. So uh, then when we done there are lots of prototyping, we are selecting the best ones. If uh, we are designers, so our client will select. Uh, if we are the students, so that uh, our supervisor will select. And then we're discussing, and then uh, also normally you have, uh, you have three options, right? You, you have 100 options what you've done, and you have maybe three options what uh, you select yourself. So, yeah, but basically everybody knows when they put everything on the table, it's, it's totally visible, there are good solutions, and there are solutions which are not uh, implementable. So uh, after the selection, we go and for the implementation, and when we are done it, so there is a feedback, the learn, and also the instructions for the future designer, uh, who will uh, work on the same uh, problem or the on the same on the same solution. So uh, as I told that now we don't have the problem of what, um, how to do, because we have many, many options how to do, but we have less ideas. Even if we see the movie industry, like the same things are turning around, the, the same movies are, are coming. So um, then, uh, for example, um, this is just a sample of 3D printing. 3D printing appears quite long time back, five years back, uh, people were expecting that it will be their, their um, huge improvement in the apparel industry. But uh, as we see now, especially the, uh, the professionals can tell that it's still under development. Because uh, if uh, we have, uh, if you experienced or just uh, students, please Google how uh, the 3D printing works. So uh, you put the material, you put the powder, and from this powder, it's uh, making layer by layer the object what you need. So uh, it, the trial for implementation uh, way it works well, like uh, everybody witnesses, 
uh, it was for the, for the medical purpose. So where the details should be done fast and uh, possible with plastic. So even uh, from my knowledge, I talked to the product designers uh, designing uh, with it, uh, so the technology is still slow. So you uh, branch your, your computer with the software to the printer and it takes one night to print, uh, for example, the design of the, uh, on the phone cover. So, uh, but uh, for designing the new phones, uh, for example, the Samsung phones and etc. cetera, uh, one designer told me it's much more faster to still do it from the phone by the hand. Because while doing, you can change, you can uh, work on it. So when you send it for the printer, you need to wait until it's like totally printed. With the fabric, it's the same. So if you see the designs, uh, for example, this picture, uh, the skirts, for sure we can go for laser cut. I don't see sort of the difference and it's always net, so it's uh, the stretch one. So uh, uh, th this is um, even with the new technology, we can face the, the limitations. So uh, please, next slide, the, the video. Can I play the video? Yeah. Thank you. Are we getting it? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. So as you will see from the video that uh, this kind of the garments uh, with this sort of the plastic net, uh, which are possible with a, uh, with a 3D printer. But uh, also from everything I went through their works, the collection made only by the 3D, 3D printer, uh, there is the, the strangely still we are coming to the same uh, to the same shapes, to the same silhouettes, uh, telling that um, what is uh, different from the normal design process uh, and the 3D printer that we create any shape. We can create any shape, so we are not restricted to the pattern. And seeing that it's stretchy, it can give any sort of the, uh, of the creative uh, garment. It doesn't work. Any problem, Shumika? Yes, ma'am. There is a problem with playing the video. If I play the video, it is not sharing. We can do it later. No, you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You continue. We'll play it later. Yeah, I, I will go. Uh, uh, I will continue so we can. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can. Ha you can have the trials because the video was good, so it's uh, the explanation. Of that. Let's see. Let's see. Go. No, no problem. No problem. Should, should I click on it? My name is Denit Pele. I've just graduated from Shankar College of Design. I wanted to create a ready-to-wear collection printed entirely at home. Not able to see that anyone can get. Can we also see anything, Shumukha? Yes, ma'am. I'll. Okay. Uh, no worries. Uh, if you if you need the trials, uh, so uh, you can continue, and uh, I will continue the, the lecture. Maria, you continue the presentation. Afterwards, we will see the video. Yeah. Yes. And in case uh, we are sharing uh, then the uh, the presentation, so people can see uh, by themselves. So no no problem. Sorry for fun convenience. So in case we can't share guys with you the, the videos, you can go yourself after. And, uh, I have also that uh, quite a bad quality of the, of the slides. And I don't know if I can manipulate with it. Yeah. It's okay, but you can continue. Uh, uh, and um, so then uh, I wanted to introduce you to uh, one designer uh, who is basically the architect. And as I uh, told you, she done the shift uh, towards, the, towards fashion. 
I want to know this. Uh, can we? Uh, I can give you the remote control because uh, it's very pixelized and I can't see. Uh, oh, okay, this is better. This is a little bit better. Uh, but still, it's not a full screen, full screen mode, and uh, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Is it, Just uh, is it, put the screens on full screen uh, slides, please. Uh, see, um, it's all blurry, and the text is not visible. Uh, okay, this is visible. not perfect, but it's a little bit better. Oh, yeah, yeah. They are, now, now it's better. Now it's better. So um, then um, this lady, Julia Corner, uh, she's the um, Los Angeles-based architect, and she's called as a uh, queen of the 3D. So uh, she uh, also collaborated with the different fashion brands, and she done her first uh, haute couture collection totally 3D printed. So uh, after the lecture, if you have time, just go through her website and you will see all that connection, uh, what she done between the architecture and, uh, and fashion design. Uh, do we have normal connection, internet connection, or we have interruption? Yes, I need someone here, please. Uh, should I continue? Am, am I audible? Yes, yes, you're audible, Mario. Okay, okay, perfect. Now I uh very sorry for the for the interruption. So uh, here now we have everything. So we have, I hope uh, that people can hear me and uh, yes, yes, they can hear you. Uh, the slides. So uh, this lady, uh, she done the costume design for the Black Panther. Uh, if you see the designs done, I, and it's like 100% done on the 3D printer. So when you see uh, the designs, uh, if you analyze with your creative way of thinking, with your uh, experience, you can see that most of the thing might be done with the different materials. And uh, for example, uh, the costume can be the hand weaved. And uh, again, uh, it shows you that we can, you do technology. can I play the video now? Uh, which one? Uh, you you managed first to one. see yeah. oh, the video. Oh, the first video, if you can have it, will be great. Yes, yes. Yeah, if you can put the, that that video. Cool. Yeah. yeah. One second. Like, I'll be sharing the video. So, uh, that girl who done the collection totally printed on the 3D printer available. In I've just graduated from Shankar College of Design. I wanted to create a ready-to-wear collection printed entirely at home using printers that anyone can get. I've spent the past year searching for the best solution. I worked with leading experts in the field. like the result. It looks a little bit like lace and it moves beautifully. Just imagine 
imagine the potential. If you're called print your own jacket, traveling with no luggage, just print your clothes in the hotel room. Will we soon be able to design, share, and print our own clothes directly from home? Okay, perfect. Uh, we are back. Yes, we are back. Yes. Can I can I have the representation? Uh, so I will, yeah. I will continue, then we'll uh, do another video. So um, as you see in that exchange here, uh, to my analysis, the design is still the same, and uh, the fiber used. So it's still the plastic fiber. So uh, we are not uh, for the like uh, during the research for the last five years. Still, we are on the same. Uh, position uh, of the research, not on the implementation. So, and um, another way, um, the, um, what, what we can see, so the connection between architecture, uh, uh, which is using now the 3D printer also, and the, um, uh, and the fashion. Uh, so I can't guys make it on the full screen. So if it's possible to help me to put the full screen mode for that. I, I don't see the kind of, oh, okay. So yeah, the next slide, next slide. Okay. So another way what I found that uh, can be uh, very interesting and uh, everybody can work on it, be inspired by the natural structure. So uh, this is called the uh, biomimicry. Biomimicry also just give the introduction who is into it. And I think that students should pay attention to these ideas. So the ideas taken from the nature, analyzing by the, um, the existing shapes, the existing adoption of the biological shapes in the nature and so applied into fashion. So the most uh, uh, what we have for that uh, taken from the nature, uh, natural at least it's a scratch. So what we are using the Velcro. So this uh, came with a, uh, through the biomimicry. So through analyzing of the natural, uh, natural uh, um, environmental things, so the environmental natural ideas from, from outside. Then especially the biomimicry it used uh, in the um, uh, automobiles and uh, the planes that um, aeronautic. Uh, as the idea just to give one of the keys what can be also done. So uh, another researchers uh, which were done with the totally new things, uh, it's for example making the, the fabric from the um, seagrass or to grow their own fabric through the biological uh, process. But uh, still it's under experimentation and it can't be put on the, on the large scale of production. Um, so, and one artist, uh, one fashion artist, let's say, because fashion there are two options. We do the, um, our research, our creative approach, and we create the um, haute couture collection, so which is not very much variable, but it gives the ideas to the others. And then we produce the uh, ready to wear collection, making, uh, taking the ideas from the haute couture, but how it can be implemented to, to the, to the ready, ready made garments. So um, Iris Van Herpen is considered as the most prominent for the decades uh, fashion designer from Denmark. And uh, she um, experimented uh, with all kinds of, uh, of the materials. And uh, then um, when we see her collection, it's always interacting and it's always new. Um, she's making uh, two collections per year and uh, if um, we have a students for the auto culture, uh, I will explain if you are not aware. So we need to produce the two collections, fall and we, um, summer, spring, 
uh, between 28 and uh, 36 gum and sometimes you have more but uh, you can see that it's just changing of the colors but uh, and the composition is, uh, is the same the same pieces are coming and uh, then uh, we need to show it in the um, fashion weeks uh, all uh, like you choose the fashion week all around the globe what you want to participate or you do your in-house fashion show but um, the haute couture houses they try to uh, conduct it during the fashion weeks even if it's not uh, under the coverage of the fashion week uh, because it's much more easy to attract the, uh, the media and the same guests uh, from from the fashion weeks so that's why it's like more package organized already. So um, Iris Van Herpen, she's presenting uh, for the, I think she was doing for the fashion, uh, Paris Fashion Week and now she shifted to New York and it's like the arrangement between the, uh, the designer and the organizers. So if you want to start the, uh, the Haute Couture Fashion brand, uh, you need to do those two collections. Then for sure they have they are um, ready to wear lines. It's the same with the Indian designers because uh, now they are also in the um, like doing the fashion uh, functional garments. They are in in uh, mass market at the same time, uh, collaborating with the different brands. So if you can if you can uh, play the next video where um, Iris is explaining her her approach to fashion and from where she she came. Simuka. Do you want the video? Yeah, the, the second video. If yeah, yeah. Shumuka, please play. Continue meanwhile, Maria. I'll just play with them, yeah. So, um, we'll... we'll Welcome to, to this video. She is explaining her creative approach that she came from the dance background and what she wants to create, which is uh, very much on demand, it's the show. It's not the fashion show by itself. It also to show the um, te technical approach to this, the new technology, uh, something new. So people coming to the fashion show not, it's not only the model walking on the ramp. So uh, for basically how many years we have, like for half of the uh, century it become boring. So it should be with a new music, with a, uh, like for example, upcoming musician, with a uh, light show. So it become the show as any theatrical show, the music show and accompanied by the garments of the designer. So this is, uh, I think this is a nice new uh, creative approach to the fashion show as it is. So it should be something new all the time proposed to the, uh, to the public. So the achievement on different levels, no, not on the, uh, the garment on the, uh, on the model. So when we work, uh, guys, can I have back the presentation? Otherwise, I can continue, there is no problem. Uh, I need the, the slide number. Oh, nice, we can have the video. My name is Iris van Herpen. I'm a fashion designer. We are in my atelier in Amsterdam. I specialize in haute couture, which I see as the art of fashion, where I combine traditional craftsmanship with more innovative techniques. We do two shows a year in Paris, for which we make small collections, about 20 looks. I used to come from dance, so within my work I'm very much focused on looking for new forms of movement, new forms of femininity, where we focus on the body but also try to get up. Those buildings, so see, it's, it's uh, very much reminding the text show, the 3D, uh, what, we, what we just saw. So, but it's for sure in the large scale. And as uh, the creative thinking, it's going in the same range of what we just saw. Uh, guys, if we can put the, uh, the videos. Play, about, uh, play the video. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so th this, uh, um, and imagine how, like while uh, seeing the video, 
uh, it can be uh, implemented to the um, uh, to the fashion design. Do you want to learn to draw professional and impressive artwork from scratch that will blow people's minds? I'm Scott Harris, professional. And Dame Zaha Hadid designed buildings that could look as fluid as mercury while appearing as light as a leaf. Sensuous parabolic shapes became a trademark of her architectural aesthetic, leading to her being called the Queen of the Curve. Her creations were always eye-catching, often draw-dropping, and sometimes controversial. People forgot what you can do through modern work. You know, there was an obsession with historicism, a vernacular, a postmodern. So the idea of new was almost alien. Zaha Hadid was born in Baghdad and studied maths at university before moving to London in the 70s to train as an architect. She set up her own practice shortly afterwards, then found there were no takers for her avant-garde ideas. I was a woman, I did strange stuff. I think they're all together intertwined, but there was definitely has been, and I still remain, it's much better now. There's a definite stigma to about the woman thing. It was this Cubist-inspired building in Germany that proved to be her big breakthrough. Soon, her ability to mix old-school craft skills with revolutionary new computer programs saw her emerge as one of the most exciting and innovative architects of her generation. I think she has added an enormous amount of language to architecture. She, she's devised shapes that we never thought that we could do. I never thought that any architect could do. Uh, and that is something, you know, there's a lot of architecture that is a sort of variant on the architecture that's come before. But she did, she did shapes that gobsmacked you. Her visual flamboyance proved popular abroad, but less so in the UK, her adopted home, where she really only made her mark on the public's consciousness with her aquatic centre for the 2012 London Olympics. To be accepted as a, an architect, I think is, I'm not sure it's fully done. Not here, not in this country. I'm still considered to be on the margin, you know, despite all these things. And I don't mind being on the edge, actually. It's a good place to be. She had a reputation for being short-tempered and difficult, while some of her buildings were criticized for being impractical and overblown. And there's no doubt she was uncompromising, a characteristic that allowed her to overcome prejudice and skepticism to design some truly remarkable buildings for which she received multiple awards. Dame Zaha Hadid was a trailblazing visionary. She leaves behind an extraordinary body of work to be marveled at by generations. Hi, have you always... Yes, ma'am. Yeah, perfect. So, okay. yeah, perfect. Thank you. We are we managed we managed and then if you can put the uh, the full screen mode. So, uh, because I don't have that panel, I don't know why uh, we're still on the always book. Perfect. Uh, so, as you saw, uh, it's very much connected with what we are doing, and also I like your phrase like uh, I don't mind living on the edge. It uh, doesn't mean that, uh, like, what they told that she was so short temper or whatever. No, it's the age of creativity. It's the age of your research, of the, uh, the inspiration, what you are uh, searching for. So, uh, to discover and then to implement. And get the, also for the students, I have the advice that you, you need your sketchbook to carry everywhere. So uh, like you need to, uh, it's, it should be like your cell phone. You are carrying it everywhere, so you need to carry the sketchbook. So in sketchbook, you can fast do the sketches, fast do your notes, and uh, maybe uh, you can also, I don't know, by writing, by drawing, just get the inspiration from outside. So uh, this, this should be the must, because if you, got inspired by, I don't know, the leaf, the architectural detail, by piece of the fabric, what you saw, you're just making notes. So this is important. Um, then, then later you can go through, you can uh, implement it to your design and you can develop it uh, to, into something new. So uh, as I told the shift, uh, we can have that 3D printing thing, so with the chemicals, um, in, 
with what the powder was uh, is done like the different elements but we still can't create a 3d printing with a cotton fiber with a natural fiber so uh, seeing that it's a long process uh, it took almost five years now uh, people can have and can buy their 3d printer at home to print the small things so this is a homework you can just do google uh, there are lots of videos about uh, the different uh, 3d printers what it can do what it can't do so uh but basically it's still if uh, there is one thing it's called the 3d pen it's just uh, the plastic uh, and the um, plastic rod entering inside and then you are just mel melting it and doing it layer layer by layer so this is basically uh, the technique for every 3d printer and then it's quite costly and it's very slow so to normally to print one of the uh, of the parts uh, you need to put it for for full night so this is uh, still the technology it's not on the top so by another way the researchers are going through the natural things so we can uh, research in the existing materials from the environment and uh, i think that everybody saw that uh, collection which done the huge um, feedback let's say and pretty good feedback from all the fashion professionals so it was uh, what it was called by Vogue uh, magazine the balloon collection so one student Norwegian student uh, he uh, developed the collection fully done uh, with a rubber and um, while explaining he's telling that the most difficult part of uh, this collection was uh, his researches with uh, different um, rubber pr produces in Sri Lanka. So uh, it's from the, 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 the tree and it's a natural rubber and uh, he developed it into, let's say it's not the variable garment for sure, it's the object with becoming the dress. So, and then uh, what I saw like many students from uh, different places and designers, they repeated it. So they, that idea of uh, uh, object, uh, variable object or transformation, we talked about the, during the last uh, lecture, we talked about the transformation, uh, transformers. So how one garment transformed to the other and like how the transition is uh, going on. So uh, this, was, and this is very like, visible. When we see the show, it's, it's really fun. And um, then uh, technically I was always surprised how, uh, how the models could breathe inside. But uh, in the explanation, in the note about his collection, he's telling that he um, put so much gallons of the, uh, of the oxygen inside. So uh, it was enough for breathing for 12 hours because the balloon, uh, the balloon is, uh, is great. So uh, this, this is the, the part, it took him two years to develop this collection. So guys, if we can replay the video, it will be great. It's, yes. it's the last video, so we won't be bothered anymore. <laughs> <We're not laughs> delayed. I'm not bothering, man. Should I uh, give it some relief?
Yes, yes, yes. Right. Uh, when we see this connection, for example, I'm sure there are lots of people come there, okay, it's so simple, it's ridiculous, he blew the balloons and went around. But there were two years of research on the material. So it's not just so easy as it, as it seems, because uh, like, uh, try it. If you don't believe that it's difficult, try to invent something similar and to make, uh, make your trials. So uh, I just wanted to share in the end my own experience with the experimentation, what I did while graduation. So um, as a students, we were approached by the Montclair uh, brand, uh, which this time I think it uh, was uh, 2008 eight or 10, something like that, uh, that um, to develop the brand, to create something new. So what they were known for the puffer coats. Uh, so puffer coats, uh, maybe the people from uh, uh, the South, they don't know. So uh, this is a nylon. Uh, fabric and we stitch in between the feathers, the goose feathers. So the good one are made with the feathers. Uh, and uh, so the common one, what uh, in India, so even in our Pondicherry market, so they, they sell it, so they produce. Uh, it's a uh, foam, just uh, that um, polyester foam, which, which is inside. The same was uh, which is in the pillows. So to be uh, easy to, to explain. So when it's a feather, it's very warm, uh, but this nylon, the requirement of this nylon is uh, that it should be waterproof because it's very um, difficult to dry the feathers. It will, you know, it can uh, get spoiled inside. So the more clear puff coat, puff coat if you go through, uh, they were known only in France. They are produced like between Italy and France uh, for the ski, um, ski things. And then um, this is uh, like they were known for this and the, it was very costly. Produced in Italy with a European uh, fabric, European uh, feeling. So uh, they wanted to come with the new ideas. They wanted to come to the World Couture Festival. So uh, they were not uh, very, uh, how can I say, I don't want to use the word stupid, so uh, they were very clever to uh, ask uh, the graduates to develop uh, the new ideas for them. So I started working on uh, their brief, let's say, how to apply this technique on the different things. So our first uh, one person come with a bag, so, but this is, um, they, they were not sure because for sure they, like what, what they will do, why we need that uh, leather, um, not the leather, now they even do the leather, uh, that nylon bag puffed, uh, what, what, what we will carry inside, the laptop doesn't need to be heated and etc. So uh, then uh, while being in Russia and Finland uh, for one winter, I, understood that I want a coat, a very long coat, uh, but I want to be comfortable in it. So what I did, I um, decided like through, through my sketches and etc. to do the skirts. So, uh, and uh, it was 2008, 2000, between, uh, like we did this collaboration for, for three years on the research. And then, um, uh, they told that the skirts, this is just ridiculous and uh, no one will wear it and why, um, why uh, I, I took this topic for the, this uh, topic of the skirts to develop. And uh, finally, a couple years back, uh, my mom uh, sent me the, uh, the picture that uh, I saw that they are in haute couture, but I was so depressed after, you know, you are just graduate, your ideas are rejected, and uh, you are getting quite, quite upset, even depressed, because you don't know your value. Uh, and I also want to tell uh, the students that, uh, like, if it's not done late uh, now, so maybe your ideas 
is too modern and the society and the, the brand is not ready for it. So now you see, I proposed uh, the gloves, I proposed the skirts, and even that uh, black garment. I don't, I can't manipulate this. If you can put uh, on the full screen, because we have done uh, the last slide, so it's very easy. Um, so uh, then I like that Baroque fashion, and I thought that the puffy part can be adapted for the, uh, something as uh, the um, Baroque silhouette also. And when I saw that uh, black uh, balloon sleeve, I was like, so surprised. Okay, guys, you, you just came now for, for this, uh, for, to be ready for my ideas. So if someone, were, I proposed even further, I am waiting, maybe they will apply it. But it was the problem of the textile. So I uh, basically proposed that um, we do the transparent, so we can color the feathers. The customer can see the feathers, and then in 2010 we had also uh, the movie that Black Swan, right? Uh, it's, I'm talking about like something 11 years uh, back, maybe like uh, the people are listening to us. They were in the preschool, anyway. Uh, so I wanted to learn to code, but don't know where to start. Finding, uh, and making the prototyping. Oh. Am I audible? Yes, yes. I uh, don't know. Uh, so um, that's what I did. Uh, I started working on the research of the fabrics. And I found out there is no transparent fabric, no transparent nylon as I wanted, because I wanted like, you know, to be like a bird, to have that uh, bird feeling. Uh, and uh, then uh, in my researches, I came to the uh, fabric used for the sails, for the uh, yachts, which was transparent, waterproof. And uh, the only one thing I was working on it, it was the stitching part. Then, uh, like in the same uh, thinking uh, mood, I passed by the Chanel shop in um, in Paris, uh, and then I found that they done the raincoats. And then I came to the shop. I started to see the stitches and etc. So they done it without glue, and I understood that it can be done. And then I went further that I thought we can make the kids clothing. We can uh, make the kids uh, jackets and we can color the feathers in different colors. So, and then it will be transparent. So it can be two layers inside, outside transparent. And then you have those fancy uh, bright feathers inside. So, uh, but uh, to be frank, I haven't finished uh, with the prototype and etc. because my second baby was born and like it's still under development. So if someone wants to take, I still have that uh, samples of that sales <laughs> in, my, <laughs> in my home. I'm traveling with them, it's pretty fun. I, I, to be frank, I've done the tote bags with it because <laughs> it's very lightweight. So I've done the bags and then it's fashionable. You can see what are the beach bags the pot I had like 10 meters of it and 10 meters it was this uh basically it was this size so that uh, like it, it's very light and uh and I wasn't restricted to the cost this is was pretty cool because if you see on their website the cost is about thousand dollars for the piece so uh this was the like I just wanted to show that your ideas you have now just make fast the prototype and also if someone wants to develop it and more than, you know, I'm not charging for ideas. I have many to share. <laughs> more you share, more are coming. So this, this is the great part about the fashion. And I think that some of the pieces, uh, some of the ideas shouldn't be copyrighted because we can contribute uh, for the future. We can make the world better. So um, then I wanted to uh, just, um, uh, I need the last slide. Uh, so how we can implement uh, the creative fashion where we can like, okay, we can make it for the um, fashion show, right? We can develop it then some elements uh, for um, ready-made collection. But how can we, where we can put our beautiful ideas to show like the perfect, clean and creative art idea not a, like fashion for the art sake. So it's a uh, movies, uh, then the different shows, 
the music shows. Uh, then uh, I put some links, but we don't play. Uh, everybody who will get the presentation, you can see the Cirque uh, du Soleil, uh, Circus of the Sun. So this is the Canadian um, enterprise. And uh, so we can make a show. It just, uh, we can make something of it. Uh, we can also uh, uh, put it on, uh, uh, if you see that Met Gala, so uh, for the fashion, fashion role models, then there are the even implementation for your creative design. So don't be desperate that uh, then it will stay home on the dress form uh, in your wardrobe, the piece what you created. So uh, this will be, uh, th this is I think that part where uh, we can show our creativity because uh, what I think that fashion it should be seen on the body when we go for the um, for uh, to the museum so it's not the same feel when it's worn right because uh, when it's worn it gives different because it's in the movement when it's just on the dress form it's different so and then I wanted to ask uh, Mrs. Roshni if she can join us and uh, give more precisions about how uh, creatives can implement their design, especially in the movies and the shows. So how uh, the industry, uh, the show business industry, can help us to show our creativity. Hi Maria, thank you so much. Hello everybody. Shweta, thank, thank you for joining so us. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, you know, when it comes to, I was just listening to all the conversation. Uh, hello to Jay Kumar, sir. I see you oh, now. Good morning, good morning. So, yeah, yeah. Good morning, good morning. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we talked about how we can show our creativity on uh, cinema. So, cinema works on a different module, you know. It depends on the character. Does he reading a script? All the characters are just there written. So it's up to either to build her into the real shape. You know, the you know, it all depends on uh, your observation of the character. You know, you will be you you will end up meeting a lot of people, and each person whom you meet might you to get the kind of designs that might you know give that definite uh, look of that particular character. So we are like, like, see, if you are to recreate beggar, okay, there is a character of a beggar in there. How will you recreate a beggar? It's not something that, uh, that is, uh, it's not something that you you have to, hello? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah no. Am I, I can hear you. Yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. So the beggar cannot be like, you know, in the beggar has to be recreated. That recreation happens when you are with the society, with the people, and with the nature. Hello? Yeah. I'm suddenly. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. We yeah. can hear you. Continue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, this is how uh, uh, it happens, you know. So, what happens is when I feel uh, connect with the nature is kind of going away with. With a lot of uh, maybe our lifestyle, maybe the way we perceive things. So it's very different, you know, architecture, whether the fashion or costumes. Uh, answers to a whole lot of questions is uh, given um, beautifully in nature, whether it is the colors, whether it is the construction, or not audible properly. I think we've lost connection with us. Yeah, I will just uh, put a small input. So it means that for the uh, um, that uh, movies which represent the reality, you have a brief. So from the brief, you create the costume from the real life. But also there are the movies, uh, as we all know, the old movie Fifth Element uh, of Luc Besson, the uh, French uh, director. Uh, the collaboration was with uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier. So when we need to put the futuristic character, so we will definitely go for some uh, fashion which was never seen yet. Uh, 
Mrs. Roshan is back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't know something happened suddenly. <laughs> I just got no problem, no I'm problem. sorry. So, yeah, we were talking about this, you know, somewhere we, we are losing the connect with each other. I think the students right from the college, the design student should be, uh, you know, should learn how to uh, reconnect with the rhythm of us with the nature, you know. So sometimes we forget we are part of nature. We are nature itself. And there are a lot of answers, you know, for me, uh, in my experience, every film is different. Every character is different. So in, see, I'm right now working on a film, uh, which is a period drama of 1600. Okay. And there are nearly 140 characters in there, you know, and we're talking about, we're going back to the period when people lived like 600 years ago. So we're talking about, we're talking about the kind of, uh, uh, you know, technology they had in building up uh, garments or whether, uh, you know, the colors they might have used. There were a lot of research, you know, probably going back into their lives, understanding the requirement of living in it. That was also, I mean, that is how we can actually recreate something, you know, where costumes is built recreating. So I believe, you know, that is how we can uh, bring in fashion also into this. So uh, there is a lot of historical research. So, for example, the movie Marie Antoinette, they were doing, uh, I don't remember how many dresses they were doing in Paris for, for this movie. And uh, the huge historical approach, but still there was that some uh, modern touch on it to make it like more acceptable by the 21st century. Yes. Yes, so but that, that is a creative, that's a creative liberty, you know, designer always has a of creative liberty. So that, you know, the, you know, the, you know we cannot sometimes stick on, uh, stick on to something that the, the medieval period used or something like that. It's very difficult. So even the comfort to stay, it wants comfort, uh, you know, if the actors are not given the, the comfort, they will to perform there, you know, and on the things also to take care of. Second is like, you know, the how the colors are uh, reacting to the lights. That is how things. And then the third thing would be the, uh, the kind of uh, patterns they use at that time, uh, you know, and the fall. So, I think we have a lost connection again. Yeah. Okay, Maria, so do yeah. we... If uh, Ms. Roshan is a little bit back, I just want to ask her the question how the designers uh, and uh, the graduates can approach the film industry with their proposals. So I think it will be, it will be good to know. Ah, Ms. Roshan, yeah. you are back. Right. Yeah. Yeah, if we, you can maybe uh, write through the question, so I think we... Yeah, it might be interested for, for many people. And uh, we can take the questions now. Okay. So uh, in the question answer box, the first question that we have is, uh, what is cost and sustainability in 3D printing clothes? The problem is a cost plan. This is uh, because when everything new is coming, it's costly, right? Exactly. Then in a couple of years, it's uh, how much was the first iPhone? The same so uh, but still I can tell it's costly it's costly but uh, the price is decreasing so uh, then there are different uh, different 3d printers I think it started from uh, less than a thousand dollars and then uh, the problem is as uh, the printer but what is the problem with the printer it's the ink I uh, do you know the most expensive liquor uh, liquid in the world it's the, uh, the ink for the printer so this is, uh, it depends then on what, um, how much they charge uh, and how, uh, if uh, it's the same as a, it's called printer. So uh, if uh, that, uh, that chemical powder the, for the forming your object, so if it's uh, the same brand should be for your printer. And, uh, but I haven't seen any natural fiber done, uh, for example, to print uh, with cotton, to print with natural fiber, because I think it should melt on the high, uh, on the high temperature. Yeah. So there are still the, uh, the restrictions. But now, I think, uh, especially in the United States, people are buying to print some, uh, I don't know, for fun, let's say, 
to print toys, to, uh, to print some. Okay. Uh, as you all remember that innovation of the, um, uh, of the Pakistani doctor in the United States to uh, uh, print on the 3D printer uh, that uh, divide uh, for the ventilator. So for sure it was life life saving thing. So for fashion it's still uh, in the under development and uh, experimentation, so more or less experimentation. I also I um, while preparing I saw that uh, the Chinese technology they they print the houses. So I don't know if it's faster than the blocks, but they are just the same technique. It's just layering layering the material. So uh, is three D printing costumes reusable and washable? Uh, basically, it it looks like rubber. When I saw it, it looks like rubber. Okay. Okay, so what would be the duration taken to create and complete the biomimicry garments? Biomimicry uh, garment, I'm telling you, but it's about the uh, research. So uh, biomimicry to get inspired. Because like aeronautic for the planes, for the submarines. So it came, for example, submarines from the fish, uh, planes from the birds, right? So what kind of, uh, maybe we need to investigate uh, the feathers, uh, for example, of the birds, how, how it's done to apply to our second skin. Yeah. So uh, I was uh, thinking about uh, why we don't have, for like, for example, all the animals, they have already that uh, skin type according to the nature. Why we don't? So why <laughs> we still need that? You know, and I came to the solution that you guys are traveling, are traveling too much. So how can we adapt it uh, to the whole climates on the earth? Because the birds are traveling okay, but, uh, sometimes for the, for the, even the birds, maybe the, uh, the feathers, uh, they are not enough to keep them warm in the cold countries. So that's why we are, they're traveling to the warm countries during the winter time. So uh, that's why uh, we are created the way that we can be uh, present around the, around the earth. So that's why we need to add uh, Now that uh, I think the, the idea of what we discussed in the previous session that we just buy the one garment, which is so much technically developed that it can be adapted to your temperature plus the temperature uh, outside. So, but then also there is another psychological thing that we always want something. That's why fashion was using this, uh, this our desire to, to get something new. And we are also very much attracted by the, uh, the new technology. So we want a new phone because not because the last is uh, not working the previous one. So that maybe a mindset should be should be changed. So we should be happy what we have. Yeah. Uh, so we have a question from Dikshita. I think she's uh, highly inspired by the balloon collection. She's like, how do they do this? The balloon collection. She can just Google. <laughs> this is, uh, Dikshita, please Google. <laughs> Basically, he done the research and there is huge video on 40 minutes exactly. how to put it on. So exactly. she uh, did the community. So, okay. but this is just idea. You, you do a country pitch his balloon collection. You need to do the something, something else. Yes. Something else. But this is yes. uh, the just the idea of creativity. And uh, he explains so that uh, he woke up famous. <laughs> True. Okay. So when all circumstances are normal, uh, then how do you, how important is a role of fashion forecaster now in uh, post COVID? It's still important because I, I think that uh, I can tell with the fashion forecaster, every designer can be the forecaster. That's uh, very fun because I, I worked to the fashion forecaster when uh, the design house has the only designer who were according to our research uh, proposing the garment, uh, then the pattern maker doing the pattern making and then uh, the production part. But now uh, the, I think the sources are more available. So even it looks like you don't need to go to the Premier Vision or uh, textile exhibition, you just can Google it and then uh, you can ask your brand to send you samples. So I think that every designer can be easy to for a customer. Uh, okay. For sure, they, um, those small factories, they will need to uh, probably communicate to sign for the forecasting website. Uh, but the designers are trained 
to observe around and to give uh, their solution uh, what what can be fashionable. And I can tell you guys the forecaster can fail, easily can fail. Uh, from my knowledge, uh, it was about 2005, 2006. Uh, in Paris, we had that, uh, it was for sure forecasted uh, and uh, produced a lot of those neon colors, the very bright colors and uh, very like tank tops instead of long sleeve. So it was summer collection because we were expecting the canopy to be a very hot summer. So what happened, the summer was 18 degrees. So uh, oh. it went directly through the ramp, uh, through the, uh, when they received the gamma and it went off for the 50% off, especially the swimming suits, I remember. No one will use it on 80 degrees. So it was terribly cold summer. So there are lots of things like this is, this was the total failure of the forecast because it depends for many, many fa factors. And now I don't know what happened. Uh, like everybody is waiting really. Uh, what will happen with China as a uh, as a biggest uh, producer? Producer, so what will happen? Because I I am pretty sure that many people wouldn't go for uh, many brands wouldn't go for Chinese production. Yeah. So because Chinese production yeah. means the quantity, and they take six months. So uh, maybe we will have the um, we will we will try to produce locally, and uh, we would need six months for production. That this is what happened. That's why I explained why Zara was producing close by, why they had like 15 days in the collection. Uh, because for, for France, uh, they were producing in, uh, uh, in Morocco and shifting it through Marseille uh, on, the, uh, on the boats, so the cargo. The, this was the produ producing the next door. Um, maybe uh, so that uh, forecast, we, we don't need that one year forecast. Uh, right, and uh, what might uh, be in demand, it's a long-term forecast. This is, uh, I do understand, so yeah. for 10 years, for 15 years, this is really needed, and it needed not only for fashion industry. And uh, what we are facing now, I think uh, everybody knows, we are really 50 degree in India. So this is, uh, seriously, we are all want to cry. So uh, we need to, to fight for it somehow, on our level on our level. So uh, we won't uh, just, uh, I think that shift of the mind should be before even buying something and making something as a designer, think twice, think, think twice before, before doing. Because if, for example, the garments are unsold, so the next time when the marketing, uh, marketing team will take the, the data, they will see that they don't need this production. So well, what will basically happen? So I don't know if I answered the question about the... I think, I think it was well answered, yeah. Okay, so I have this uh, thoughtful question. So one tends to restrict their creativity sometimes because one feels that the crowd in that particular country or region might not be completely acceptable towards the idea. So, um, I think that, uh, yeah, you just need how, to keep your idea. Yeah, so she's asking actually how considerate should a designer be in this regard? Sure, if you are doing the ready-made collection, uh, ready to wear, and for you need to, uh, there are lots of factors. There are, for example, in India, there is the religious fact. So who will wear it? How you gonna have that uh, your your creative part? I I done the collection with a print on the net with a very let's say sexy sexy look. It can be sold on in Goa, sorry, Mumbai, Goa. So I want to sell it in Pondicherry. It's not just possible because it's not accepted by people. So uh, for sure, you need uh, firstly it's a marketing research. If you are doing it for the uh, for the for the sale, because for creative part, or otherwise you adapt. Like seriously, you have the idea, you adapt. So uh, one of, uh, for example, I did uh, the um, uh, the t-shirts. Uh, what I wanted the flex print. So I wanted that uh, the idea was about the missing, missing your second half, uh, but, uh, et cetera. So I wanted to print the uh, female body shape, the real size on the uh, male t-shirt and uh, male uh, body to the female t-shirt, but from inside. So no one can see it. And then I thought it can be customized so you can, 
print the scan of your loved one on your on your t-shirt and have it with your inside. So it's, what we did after, uh, we just did just that embroidery uh, on the top on the on that uh, body shape. So and then it, it went also a good idea for the uh, what mixed genders uh, clothing now. So male shape on female, uh, female on the male. So you can adapt your idea. The idea it's uh, weightless, so it can be easily put in the different jars. So it's like the air. So I think um, for sure, if uh, if you want to do the the swimming bikini and you are in Middle East, um, maybe you can you can sell and uh, women can buy at home. So. And uh, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't, but you need to, uh, this you need to be a uh, you know, realistic and uh, marketing person, so how you will market. And uh, the best test, I can tell you, you can uh, do the sketch or explain, like, do the sketch because we are all visual, just show to people and ask uh, what they wear. It's, it's the best test and it's very easy to show to the neighbors if they tell like, what is this, it makes no sense to even uh, I will go for it. And it doesn't mean it is bad. It's just not accepted here. You can, you just need to develop it and maybe to propose to someone. Also, you need to propose it to someone who is doing the similar things because uh, they have uh, they already done that. Uh, uh, they have their clients. Again, it's going to potential client. So you can't uh, sell here in South India the fur coat. Okay, so uh, what do you think are the factors which get any designer the limelight? So what, uh, this uh, basically about the inspiration. Innov inspiration and innovation, how innovative you are actually. So, uh, guys, you see that inspiration is a very difficult thing uh, because if you came to the fashion design, uh, you've been inspired by someone You've been inspired already by uh, it's, it wasn't your parents' will, so it yeah. wasn't your neighbor's will. So, uh, so uh, what is happening that you need just uh, keep this fire, you need to keep this, and then uh, yeah. so my daughter thought well, it's the uh, end of the session. <laughs> 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 and um, I think that, uh, the, look, there are many factors. Firstly, you can be inspired by everything. Then you need right. to find your style. What is yours, what is not yours. And then like put on your sketchbook what you like, what, like because the sketchbook is just collection of your memories, what you like. So in fashion, it's quite easy to uh, break it down. So it's a texture. Texture is a fabric, right? It's a silhouette, the, the shape. And uh, this is uh, that um, texture, shape and fit. So uh, not, not, not too many factors. And uh, what kind of innovation? What kind of your thing? And uh, how I test to bring, like, would, would I love to have it in my book? So especially I saw from the students, see, um, if you create something just for the uh, for the great uh, sake, what is the use? So, and also I was um, uh, persuading my students to stitch themselves for themselves. They can do that measurements uh, with the help of the others. If you are not wearing your clothing, this is a problem. I um, I done some designs for the brand, and uh, when we talked to the owner, he told like how he can see that something wrong when their own designers are not wearing their clothing. Exactly. Like what they <laughs> we have always the extra prototypes and etc. Yeah, like I'm right. uh, in Paris, I don't put anything in there. <laughs> Never. It's like always the, the prototyping part. <laughs> <laughs> was a testing part, and especially the prototypes are the best because when we give the, to the trial to for fabrication, they do their best in the quality. True. <laughs> so it's haute couture, uh, even if it's uh, jogging pants. <laughs> so uh, um, this is the thing. So if you are not um, doing something new and interesting for yourself and for the others, and you don't want to wear what you do, this is a problem. So this is, you see, the inspiration is worthless. But if you want, like, you're excited to see the result, you're excited. Like, I was uh, 
so excited to see how I can find there those two transparent uh, nylon thing and feel with the feathers and try it myself first. And if I need the transparency to see the whole body, and even I thought how, okay, how I can represent it, it will be connected with the birds, then I put the model on the snow, and then uh, about immediately with the hair, so to create a full, full set of the thing. So this is how you need, you need immediately to see like from A to Z, how, how you want to make it happen. You are creating the characters from the movies, uh, from your movie, from your life movie. So Maria, we'll take up the, quickly take up the last question for today. So how does the thinking process for a fashion event like Met Gala, uh, which is a specific topic, so what is the thinking process behind such fashion events? It's a brief, guys, it's a brief. It's just a brief what they give uh, to the designers and I think it's just for the photo shoot. Yeah, right. Uh, because they, they should be in the same thing. So if uh, they gave that uh, I mean, the, um, um, renaissance, so at least it's like going together because if someone uh, in the no no that, uh, from dressed from the Star Wars and other from uh, in the uh, skins uh, that animal skin so it, it wouldn't uh, it's a topic it's just a brief so it's a, as a brief as I told you you have the brief from your teacher or you have your brief uh, from the client uh, basically what we do uh, I try it with the students the same. Uh, while uh, before showing, I I'm choosing three ideas what I like. I don't show hundred people are getting lost. So uh, sometimes we need to uh, we can uh, join two ideas into one. Uh, but in the last, actually, don't give too much. Don't give too uh, um, too less. Three is enough. So and uh, when you have only one, uh, so there's uh, no choice. Uh, and uh, the solid three ideas, three different solid ideas, it's good, it's good. And then uh, you'll see from three probably you will like one. Uh, but if you are again uh, working with the brand, it will be uh, through the client. So they have that uh, client brief, and they have, normally they give you already everything the best sales. So because before uh, doing anything for freelancing for anyone, I'm telling I need the last ma uh, marketing report. So I need that sale report, what color, what shape, and what country. Uh, because for the big brands, they have different uh, things sold in different countries. Uh, so this one, but normally, I, if I don't have it in the brief, because for example, they tell me those red dresses were sold there, uh, so we have we want something similar but a little bit modified, etc. So this is this is quite important. So, uh, but this this is uh, this is different. So you can make the uh, fashion for art's sake with the ideas, especially I encourage the students, and then uh, with your creative. Uh, um, thinking and the help of the people from the industry, you can adapt it for the, uh, for the demand on the market. So it's possible. But for sure, with the losing a little bit of it, of the idea, but still it's so nice one. So this is, I think the best pleasure is uh, like uh, a cook we, uh, who is cooking and seeing people enjoying the food. Uh, so it's the same with the fashion designer, for sure. Like your ideas liked, implemented, and won. And exactly. Yeah. And I, I wish to everyone to uh, experience it at least uh, yeah. once, and not only last, uh, once uh, in life. Exactly. But basically, for the students, don't forget why you came to fashion. So you you wanted to sh to give your voice. You wanted to give something new but uh, uh, don't forget it on the way through the pattern making process and uh, uh, especially uh, the balloon collection you saw is a graduation collection from St. Martin's College uh, of Fashion in London so um, your graduation collection it's your uh, show, showcase for the, uh, for the future so uh, that's the only chance you will have maybe to show fully show your creativity so yeah. then you go for the industry. It won't be. Otherwise, you need to start your own brand. You need to have enough money to for advertising, and then uh, you you need to have the funds from the beginning. I'm not sure that everybody has. So, oh, correct. And, uh, I think it was it was amazing. Was
<laughs> it was Thank amazing, you. Maria. Excellent, excellent exploration. I mean, I mean those small details. Technical issue. Uh, the previous session it was uh, um, mm -hmm. the kittens. Now I block them in the room. So <laughs> <laughs> and today, uh, I mean, with the videos. But I hope uh, people was uh, people were patient enough to wait. It was no, no, yeah, of course, and it was so informative. I think those small details and concepts of the collection. I think I'm sure the videos were very informative, though it took some time. It was amazing. I think, especially for the fashion students, uh, even teachers, everybody learned a lot. Uh, gave us all a food of thought, and lots of possibilities and innovation and creativity that uh, we got to know today. So I think you mentioned somewhere in your PPT, there's no limit in terms of draping and innovation. I think that is really good. There is no, no, not, uh, no limits for how. The, exactly. the limit is idea of what. Exactly. So, and then uh, I think that, you know, that what I found from my experience, that part of the creativity is missing. The only thing is missing in uh, fashion education in India. Especially I uh, talk to professionals from NIFT. I think mm -hmm. that creativity is Hmm. This is the problem of absence of the foundation here, and uh, also that uh, uh, fashion is not only garments. This should be understood. Oh, yeah, okay, true. Because you inserted it I'm into the environment. It's not just a dress form. It's for something. The purpose. All the yes. design is for the purpose, right? Very well said, students. I think uh, you've learned really uh, good stuff today. Uh, I thank Maria and I also thank Ms. Roshni. I think um, unfortunately we lost connection with her. But it's very. No, Roshni is not there, Rasheta. She has uh, got an appointment with a producer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, right. She, she apparently then left the actually. Yeah, so she was running short of time. It's okay. Still, I'll thank her. I think in a very short period, she gave a very good insight about um, implementation of the uh, theme, good. how to. She mentioned somewhere reconnect the rhythm of nature. I think students should uh, really take this with them. A lot of research. And uh, what we can do, we can uh, ask uh, Roshini to conduct a webinar on costume yeah, designing. Correct. How we differ from fashion exactly. designing. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a complete new story, uh, complete uh, different yeah, topic. Yeah, I think that okay. uh, it, it's very useful because at least. Uh, uh, professionals know that they can use also their designs not only for the apparel, like a mass production apparel, but yeah. also somewhere and also to showcase their works by, by the uh, through the movies. Yeah, because it, uh, it's uh, the movies is a big inspiration part for fashion. Yeah, true. So thank you, Maria. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so thank I you all our attendees for being with us. Yeah. I wanted to thank Vogue Institute for this wonderful uh, possibility for me to give uh, this talk and to, uh, I hope to inspire the students and professionals for something new for, for the research, firstly search. Research, it means like there is a search and this is research. So what all you done and we need to research again to come with uh, something new. So, uh, and uh, then for the students who are now living that transformative time, and I think very challenging and very nice. Change is always good. Even if it started uh, 2020, I think it's just a disaster for everyone. <laughs> but 2020 should be perfect. I'm sure it'll come with a lot of new possibilities for sure. Right, right. And it's also, really our uh, pleasure. Audience, uh, guys, I can't answer the, uh, all the questions, but if you have yes. really important questions, please uh, send uh, any of the email IDs. I don't promise to answer immediately, but uh, I will try to find the time. It was totally our pleasure, Maria, to uh, have you with us for the, for the session. Thank you so much for sparing time. Uh, thank you, all attendees, for being with us. We'll be keep uh, we'll keep posting you the upcoming webinars. The details will be with you soon. Keep joining us and thanks for being with us. Thank you so much, Maria. See you soon in Vogue. <laughs> Have a nice day. Yeah, everyone. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.